draw the resonance structure that is suggested by this arrow. As usual, I hope that you paused the video and gave that a shot. Let's redraw and modify. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Where are the electrons coming from? Well, here we have something a little bit new. In all the previous pictures, the tail was on the lone pair. But here the tail is on the negative charge. What does that mean? Well, it actually means that the electrons are coming from a lone pair, again. So we haven't seen this convention before, but the convention is that if you put the tail on a negative charge, it means that the electrons are coming from a lone pair. So we interpret this as electrons that are coming from a lone pair. So where are the electrons coming from? They're coming from a lone pair. Since we haven't drawn the lone pair, I don't need to erase it. However, since this atom is losing the lone pair, it should become um, one step less negative. So I can erase the negative charge. And that gets rid of the tail of the arrow. Now, where are those electrons going to? Well, again, this head indicates that we're forming a pi bond. You can see that the electrons moved down towards this carbon. This carbon gained the pi bond. So, since it's gaining electrons, it should become one step less positive. Since it's positive here, now it should be neutral. So this is the correct picture. Remember that we're not drawing in the two lone pairs on this oxygen. From this point on, we're only going to draw in lone pairs uh, if we need them uh, uh, for the resonance structure. So notice the convention for dealing with lone pairs. If an atom has a negative formal charge, you don't need to draw in the lone pair. You just put the tail on the negative formal charge. And then the convention is that it's understood that the electrons here are actually being taken from the lone pair. If an atom has a negative formal charge, you don't actually have to show the lone pair at the tail of the atom. In fact, people usually do not. So now we're going to get into the habit that when there's a negative formal charge, we're not going to show the lone pair at the tail of the atom, because usually that's not done. Instead, we just put the negative charge at the tail of this arrow. On the other hand, what about if the atom does not have a negative formal charge? Well, if the atom does not have a formal charge, then you must draw in the lone pair to show where the electrons are coming from. So compare these two pictures. When the atom has a negative formal charge, you don't draw the lone pair. You just put the tail on the negative charge. But when the atom has no formal charge, then you have to draw in the lone pair to show where the electrons are coming from. So be sure that you compare these two pictures um, and Be clear in your mind about why the tail here is drawn with a lone pair, and here the tail is drawn at a negative charge. Uh, notice that this is a totally separate uh, molecule from this one down here. I just wanted to have a molecule that we can uh, use for comparison with this molecule down here. Try to draw the resonance structure suggested by this electron pushing arrow. We want to redraw and modify. So we start by just redrawing the original picture, and now step by step we're going to modify it. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Where are the electrons coming from? Well, the tail is on the negative formal charge. We just learned that that means that the electrons are coming from a lone pair. We don't need to erase the lone pair because we didn't draw it in the first place. However, we should erase the negative charge, because this atom is losing a lone pair. Where are the electrons going to? Well, this head indicates the electrons are going towards a pi bond. So this carbon just gained a pi bond, so it should become less positive. And now we can erase the arrow. So here's the correct resonance structure. Remember again that you would never want to take this lone pair and make it into a lone pair over here. That's not what this head indicates. In any way, you never go from one lone pair to another lone pair draw the resonance structure based on this electron pushing arrow. We need to redraw the original picture. Now we can modify the picture. Where are the electrons coming from? 
The tail is on the negative charge, which means the electrons are coming from a lone pair. So we don't have, have a lone pair that we have to erase because the lone pair wasn't shown, but this atom is becoming less negative. And where are the electrons going to? Well, the head indicates that we're going towards a pi bond. And since this carbon just gained a pi bond, we need to erase its positive charge. And now we can erase the arrow. So here's the correct resonance structure. What role did these two pi bonds down here play? They didn't play any role at all. How did we know they weren't going to play any role? Because they weren't involved in the electron pushing arrow. Anything that is not connected to an electron pushing arrow is not playing a role. Now it's true that there are other resonance forms that we could draw based on these um, other pi bonds, uh, but we haven't drawn them yet. Based on this electron pushing arrow, the only um, resonance structure that we've drawn is this one. So make sure that you're not making any modifications that are not required by the electron pushing arrow that you've shown. Now if we wanted to, we could show, show more electron pushing arrows and do more resonance structures. But at this point, that's not what we're going to do. We, at this point, we just wanted to learn how to deal with this single electron pushing arrow. Try this example. First, we redraw the original molecule. Now we make modifications. Where are the electrons coming from? Where are the electrons going to? Where are the electrons coming from? The tail is on the lone pair. So the electrons are coming from the lone pair. So we need to erase the lone pair. Well, if this atom is losing a lone pair, it should become more positive. Where are the electrons going to? They're going to the pi bond. This atom just gained electrons in a pi bond, so it becomes less positive. And now we erase the arrow. So here's the correct resonance structure. Why did we have to draw a lone pair in this example when we didn't have lone pairs in the last couple of examples? Uh, well, remember, if an atom has a negative formal charge, then you don't need to draw the lone pair because the negative charge can stand for the lone pair. And you can just put the tail on the negative charge. But this nitrogen didn't have a negative formal charge. Since it didn't have a formal charge, we had to draw in the lone pair so we could show where the tail is, so we could show where the electrons are coming from. Once again, let me remind you that as you're doing these examples, um, if you're getting everything right except the charges, then you're totally screwing up. Getting everything right except the charges is totally useless. Remember, the reason for doing these examples is to get the charges right. Um, so anytime you get a problem um, right except for the charges, go back and do it over again until you can get it right with the charges. Uh, the charges are the most important part of what we're focusing on. Try this example. This was actually a trick question. Um, there is no answer to this because this is not a correct electron pushing error. This is a meaningless electron pushing error. Where are the electrons coming from? Well, notice that the tail here is not on a lone pair, and it's not on a negative charge, which could stand for a lone pair. The tail here is just directly pointing at the atom. What does it mean if the tail is directly pointing at the atom? It means we screwed up. That's meaningless. Um, when you're using electron pushing arrows, you never put a tail directly on an atom. That's completely meaningless. So I just wanted to point out that that's never how you, uh, you show a lone pair. So we've been focusing here on um, moving lone pairs. Um, so if you're moving a lone pair, either the tail should be on a lone pair, or if there's a negative formal charge, the tail should be on the negative formal charge, which stands for the lone pair. But you never put the tail right on the atom. That just doesn't mean anything. Um, now, what did this person probably mean? Well, this person probably meant that the oxygen was donating a lone pair. Now, this oxygen does not have a formal charge, so what the person should have done is drawn in the lone pair. Remember, I just said that normally we're not going to draw lone pairs anymore. Normally, we're not going to draw lone pairs. So if you need to put a tail on a lone pair, then you have to draw the lone pair in. You cannot have a tail directly pointing to the atom. That is just not the convention. Okay, now this is a good electron pushing arrow, and now we can draw the product. I don't think I'm going to bother to do that. Um, that should be easy for you at this point. So the point of this example was just to remind you that um, the tail has to be pointing at a lone pair, or 
In this case, the oxygen has a negative formal charge. So here we don't have to draw in the lone pair. We can just put the tail on the negative charge and that stands in for the lone pair. So that's perfectly fine. In fact, uh, normally it would kind of be unconventional to actually draw the lone pair in here. Again, remember, we're only going to draw lone pairs when we really need them. So probably you should avoid actually drawing the lone pair on this oxygen because we don't need to draw the lone pair here. The negative charge kind of stands in for the lone pair. In this case, though, there was no formal charge, so here we had to draw in the lone pair. The one thing you never want to do again is this. This is totally wrong. You can't have a tail that's just pointing at an atom. That is meaningless. These are the correct, the two correct possibilities.